It's time for Living Your Purpose, a motivational and inspirational podcast with Peter and Joyce Nielsen. Welcome to Living Your Purpose podcast with Joyce and Peter Nielsen, and we are just delighted to be here. Babe, is it getting cold or what? Oh, oh my goodness. (laughs) As I had our fireplace on since 10 o'clock this morning. <laughs> you know, we talked about um, closing the pool. The pool is closed. Mm-hmm. There's already leaves and water in there. The boat is still in the water, freezing. But it has been like in the 40s here in the state of Michigan. So whether you're tuning in from the West Coast, the East Coast, our friends up in Canada, A lot of you are experiencing cold weather as well, and um, I just hope that the skies above you are cooperating. I know that you love the warm weather. (laughs) I do, but you know what, honey? It makes for great fishing weather as the last couple weeks of the boats, and I must admit, on an evening stroll, the change of the colors in the trees is stunning. So I will take a positive outlook on that. (laughs) And that is growth for Joyce because she just really it's it's hard once the fall comes and the gray comes you know you're one of the people that experience a hard time getting through a hard snowy gray cold dark winter (laughs) yeah that's a whole other show (laughs) that's a whole other show you know today I'm super excited because um I have probably over a million point two listeners, followers, uh, my newsletter, um, and most of most of you are f- having physical challenges, and a lot of you from that category has IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, and I just want to thank you for following and for wanting to better your health. Um, and that's what this show is about, digestive health. And, you know, I mean, I could, I could talk now until the summertime on just the do's and don'ts for proper digestive health. So thank you for just inspiring me to do another show on this because a lot of times I live with it every day. I was born you know, with an incurable condition called Crohn's disease. There's no cure for it. Um, It's almost taken my life twice. Uh, I haven't had dairy products or red meat for almost 40 years. We now have introduced some grass-fed red meat every once in a while, maybe a few times a year. Um, But digestive health is, is serious business. And I just wanna shed some light and say that, you know, with my faith and with our creator, he has given me amazing life filled with uncommon favor. Um, and I'm living with something that for most of us, it's, it's a hard thing to deal with. It's like having the stomach flu 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So um, I'm excited to just spread some light shed some light on news that you can use about digestive health. I really am too, honey, because the fact is so many of your followers and listeners have IBD or digestive health issues and being that you are the national spokesman for Crohn's and colitis, um, you're the perfect person to address these issues and for inspiration. And even those of us that don't experience that, a lot of us, like myself, live with someone that does. So it's kind of just adjusting your routine to accommodate everybody around you. Um, my kids also have a lactose Your son intolerance. And, daughter, yep. and there's a lot of little modifications we've made to our lifestyle just to feel healthier and stronger every day. You know, and if I could say something, it's like, like her daughter loves cheese and dairy and ice cream Mm -hmm. and milk and stuff so what happens is she's similar to me on how it it works i could have a dairy queen and have a you know blizzard (laughs) an oreo blizzard nothing will bother me but if i had that blizzard 
and then had, say, a protein shake with dairy mm -hmm. or had a, you know, turkey burger with cheese, the accumulative effect will end up getting me irritated to the bathroom, bleeding internally. And um, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I have that and it doesn't bother me, but it's not that one time. It's how many times you've had the dairy or those irritants that are bothering you. Or the or the amount of, because everybody's right. portion little, sizes is critical. a little different. Yeah, and actually, statistics are 60 to 70 million people are affected by all digestive diseases. Oh, that's a crazy and number, man. It, it really is. And I mean, it, you go into the supermarkets and you're flooded by it everywhere you look. and. 20 million Americans suffer from chronic digestive diseases, which make up 25% of surgical operations. Wow. So, I mean, wow. maybe maybe the <laughs> insurances in medical business wow. like you to be taking in that stuff, but it's not healthy. It's not, well, maybe it's not healthy for all of us. Right. I mean, even the ones that we don't notice right. the effects, it's still there right, because to a lot some of the things, degree. Right, because a lot of the things that your daughter and I and millions of other people um, is dairy, the lactose, and I'm just, that's just one area, the lactose in, in dairy, but um, people, whether it's ice cream, whether it's cheese, whether it's milk, uh, it's all affected. And as Joyce was saying, it really is portion sizes and the accumulation of this happening. So it was really near and dear to my heart to talk about this today. And um, I wanted to just kind of paint a picture on news you could use, things that can help your digestive system. Another thing that I think people don't realize is that most of our serotonin, which is a, a brain, you know, neurotransmitter um, that affects our feel good is serotonin, which is a, a hormonal uh, process that our body goes through, whether it's dopamine, the up one or serotonin, you know, that makes you feel mellow. These are all important. And a lot of times people don't realize that with digestive health, most of our serotonin is produced in our gut. Most carcinogens, disease, um, inflammation, um, chronic conditions start in the gut. And when you think about that, a lot of people, including people that I, I love, I mean, I remember my daughter, she was in my library and she had something behind her back. And I was like, Dana, I was like, what is that? And she was getting like emotional where you could see these alligator tears. And I finally got her to go like this and she had a, a chocolate ice cream bar. And it was just dripping down the stick. <laughs> and and she was looking like saying, Daddy, I love this. And what I said to her, I said, I said, babe, as soon as you ingest that and it goes past your esophagus, it wants to hurt you because your body on a cellular level can't break that down. And it was hard for her to grasp because she would eat this stuff. And then all of a sudden she was living in the bathroom. She was bleeding internally. Uh, when she went to the bathroom. So all I can say is that knowledge is power. I want to give you simple news that you could use on things that will bring inflammation down. Most diseases will start with inflammation, whether it's heart disease, um, oral hygiene, um, inflammation, Crohn's disease, cancer, um, arthritis. I could go on and on and on on all these conditions are basically manifested um, and intensified through inflammation. 
So the first thing that I would say, if you are living with inflammatory bowel disease, and that's classified under an umbrella of Crohn's disease, also of colitis, IBD, um, inflammatory bowel disease, um, IBS, ulcers, um, all of these things, leaky gut syndrome. If you can live on an anti-inflammatory eating regimen every day, you're going to bring inflammation down. You're going to give your body a chance to heal itself and you're going to live a more quality filled life. And some of those things you, she's an amazing cook. She really is. It's crazy. You're I mean, very flattering. No, <laughs> baby. It's, it's unbelievable. She could take nothing and make it into something spectacular when it comes to food. But when you live on an anti-inflammatory regimen and so many of the things, Joyce, that you make in our kitchen, rosemary, ginger, turmeric, um, avocado, uh, triple version olive oil, um, these are all things that literally are anti-inflammatory. Um, all these things, salmon that have omega-3 essential fatty acids, they bring inflammation down. Yes, they still have some fat, but it's coming from unsaturated, mono and polyunsaturated fat. These are things that are going to bring inflammation down. Now, something that has the same amount of fat is your dairy, your T-bone steak, your filet mignon. The reason why that's not good is it's got saturated fat, which increases inflammation and which will get you in a bad situation. Another good thing to stay away from, um, to, to add to your staples, to your eating is avocado. Avocado, you love, right? I do. I, I mean, <laughs> I love it in all different forms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an avocado is a super food just packed with mono and um, polyunsaturated fats. And it's a great way to bring inflammation down. Now, portion sizes is critical because too much salmon, which has omega-3 essential fatty acids, omega-6 as well, um, avocado, too much of that. I don't care if it's good or bad fat, too much of any fat, you'll wear it. So make sure if you're doing a macronutrient meal plan, 30% of your calories should be coming from protein, 25% of your cal calories should be coming from fat. 45% of your calories should be coming from carbohydrates. I mean, it's so important, 60 to 70% on how you look and how you feel has to do with what you eat. So true. You know, and it's, it's really, really important. Another great thing, if you want to deal with calming down your digestive tract and believe it or not pineapples pineapples have an anti-inflammatory um, agent in it called bromelain and bromelain in the pineapples help bring inflammation down so other things that are great to remember in your cupboard in your um your spice rack is which i mentioned the turmeric mm -hmm the rosemary, the ginger, the green tea extract. Babe, don't forget the cayenne. The cayenne. <laughs> She's so right. We love, We go through literally red pepper, cayenne pepper, mm -hmm. a whole jar of it. We go through like 10 days. Well, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but close. I mean, we go nuts. I mean, I get carpal tunnel doing this. <laughs> but red pepper, cayenne pepper mm -hmm. is wonderful for bringing the inflammation down. It's the complete opposite of inflammatory, which is your dairy, your milk, your steak, your cheese, etc. You know, I mean, so there are all different things that are important to understand about digestive health. 
Another one, believe it or not, is your mental state of mind. And you may say, Peter, what does it have to do with digestive health? Well, a trigger is stress. So if I'm stressed out and God forbid someone stole my car or something happened and it just stressing me out, that's going to cause a few different things. Number one, it's, gonna, it's a trigger for Crohn's. Number two, it's going to cause a cortisol fight or flight syndrome. And then that turns into homocysteine, which causes havoc on your intestines, on your digestive tract, on your heart, carcinogens, cancer agents, your brain. Um, it's a bad thing. So not only do we need to know about the foods to stay away from, but we also need to know about certain triggers and then foods that will help. Another thing that you and I do is meal prepping and we eat how many hours between every oh well <laughs> i like to graze throughout the right. day and he does as well but i mean typically my last big meal of the day at, at the biggest one i eat is supper and it'll probably be around 6 6 30 so <laughs> unless it's like a, a date night out or something right. you know we want to be later but on an, on an average but I go to bed early too. So you want to give yourself how many hours is that between what at you eat? At least two and a half to, to three hours before you go mm -hmm. to bed. And like she said, grazing, two and a half to three hours throughout the day. Throughout the day. And for example, for him for breakfast, he likes a big meal. I'll make him an egg white omelet with all the veggies included in it, or <laughs> or a quiche. But myself, I'm not a big eater in the morning, and one of my kids is, the other one isn't. So what we go on is smoothies, and I will fill up on a smoothie for breakfast, but it will have, um, I call it like a detox smoothie, and it'll have the ginger and the turmeric and cow and spinach and pineapple and mangoes and vanilla protein powder. And so you're still getting all your vegetables and your protein, but you're drinking it. So there's various ways that will help you digest as you go and then just graze on some nuts or, um, it, and if you pre-pack, yeah. you said meal prepping, one of his favorites is a dish that I'll make in these um, four container carts compartments yeah. and I'll do like a week's at a time and she measures the protein mm -hmm. your body can only utilize 30 to 40 grams of protein within a two and a half hour so she measures that amount of protein she does the same thing with sauerkraut yeah for carbs yeah. fibrous vegetables carbs um, yellow orange red peppers um, and then you put mm -hmm. you put sauerkraut which is a pre and a probiotic, mm -hmm. which and we're going to be talking about. And you now. can do either turkey or chicken for your protein. Right. And um, sometimes, if you like tomatoes, you can add tomatoes in there. Yes. And you just kind of, you know, mix that all together, and it's a great booster. Oh, I that's love it. Really yeah. easy on your digestive system. Sauerkraut is a pre and a probiotic, so it's helping your digestive system. And what she's saying is that. When you basically kind of graze, you're giving your intestines enough time. Even in my standpoint, I'm minus three feet of my ileum, my small intestines. So I'm able to digest it because I'm not a glutton eating too much. Your body can only utilize 30 to 40 grams of protein within a two and a half hour period of time. Mm -hmm. You can only utilize 75 grams of carbs, which equates to 300 calories in a 90 minute period of time. I think that's a big mistake a lot of people make. Um, so they'll think, you know, maybe I want to lose weight. I'm only going to eat X amount of calories a day and they'll try to starve themselves throughout the day, right. but then you'll overeat at one setting and it's harder for your body to digest that amount of food. Even if it's clean food, if you're overeating it, at one setting, it's harder 
to push through. So it's good to space things out and time them and make sure that if you do get to that point where you're feeling those, you know, grumbles in your tummy, you're not just reaching for anything, that you have something pre-prepped that's healthy and easy digestible that you can take in. I couldn't agree with you more. And so many, <clears throat> so many people need to, to know that if you have too much, not only are you gonna wear it, but it's gonna be stored as fat. And also what Joyce was saying is, all these things are trying to bring inflammation down is that we need to have more good bacteria versus bad bacteria. Because what we've learned in medical science is that inflammation will cause havoc to the body. And inflammation comes with bad bacteria. So if a good example, and again, I'm, I'm so, um, some of my best friends are doctors and I've taken antibiotics, um, whether it's a Z pack or something that I've been subscribed. I don't take a lot of medicine. I take no medicine for the Crohn's. But my point is, is that for people that are taking a lot of antibiotics, they kill the good and the bad bacteria. And I'll say it a different way. They kill the bad and the good bacteria. So they're demolishing everything. You may feel better, but then all of a sudden you wonder why your stomach's all messed up when you take antibiotics. And it's because the good guys aren't there. So you need to have a balance of good guys versus bad guys when it comes to bacteria. So the good guys kick some booty and keep this at bay, which is gonna keep inflammation at bay, heartburn, diarrhea. I could go on and on and on. So it's so important. And there's a lot of good prebiotics out there, but there's also a lot of foods like uh, sauerkraut, like other foods that have probiotics and prebiotics in mm -hmm. them. So knowledge is power, but when it comes to digestive health, as we just discussed, 60 to 70% on how you are going to have more quality in your life and feel better has to do with what you put in this little circle called your mouth. So all I can say, and this is just one of many podcasts that we'll be doing on digestive health, we want to hear from you. You know, the main reason that we're doing this is to truly love on you guys. So if you do have a question, first subscribe to our YouTube um, and leave a message, a question so that we could answer it, correct? Correct, and uh, just another thing on a quick note, I noticed uh, with my family in particular, people that have sensitive IBD or digestive problems, <clears throat> besides the dairy, you need to be careful of what you're eating on the sugar intake yes. as well. And that may seem obvious to other people, but other people really, they don't realize how much yeah, of it trigger. you're really taking in. And I know my daughter specifically, yes. um, she'll have one chocolate bar for a treat after a whole day of eating super clean and it'll just destroy her stomach yep. because of the sugar intake from it. So Agreed. you just have to be really conscious the labels of what you're eating if it's anything that you're not finding like when you go into the grocery store grocery store and you shop like all the inner aisles are going to be that yeah. processed box Produce food. section is king <laughs> yes mm -hmm. so just be mindful be mindful of how much you're intaking a little treat here and there is good um but if you're overdoing it or uh you you, you know, you play, you pay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You're going to feel it. and um, Especially with the holidays coming up, oh it's easy golly. to, you know, maybe you have two pieces of pie and, and then all of a sudden you're dying or you have something with butter on it or those little, those little things you don't realize have those triggers. So just be conscientious of what you're taking in. And many of you may be asking, well, what are some of the signs? And... Some of the signs that are obvious are um, abdominal pain, um, extra 
gastric distress, um, feeling bloated, um, feeling foggy where you feel confused, uh, feeling chronic fatigue. These are all things, believe it or not, associated with your gut, mm -hmm. even depression. Um, when you're eating the wrong foods and you're not producing serotonin, which is that balance of feeling good and calm, you are literally going off course. I mean, the bottom line, like I said before, is inflammation is the cause of many, many diseases. You know, even if you have like mucus or a cough, these are all things. <coughs> Excuse me. As you're coughing. Up. <laughs> I apologize. These are all things that are signs if you do it often of possibly having digestive health. You know, for people that want to tune in, um, how can people reach us? Yes, please, because we'd love to hear your feedback and any inquiries you have. So please reach out, uh, peter at peternielsen.com. You can find us on social media, Peter and Nielsen. Yeah, and we are just super excited on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You can catch us on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes. I just feel blessed beyond measure on how God has just put favor on this podcast, the TV work that we're doing, uh, Zervita, uh, Exoceuticals. G Medical. It's just been a beautiful few months on how God is just um, giving us a bigger platform to reach you. So um, if you like this, again, subscribe, tell your friends. It's all about you. It's all about we, not me. It's about truly putting more quality in your life. There is no perfect person other than our Creator, and we need to make sure that we take care of our health. No way you can live a purposeful life unhealthy. So our hope, our prayer, is that you dig deep, soul search, not only find your reasons why, but the way that an engine light goes on in a car and you take it to a mechanic, if you're feeling a pain, if you're feeling a sensation, if something's not right with your digestive health, Make sure that you see an expert in that field, a doctor. Make sure that you get it diagnosed so that you can truly get back on track, get back in the game, and live the life that you're destined mm -hmm. to live. Yeah, be mindful of what you're taking in and be accountable for that and just kind of keep track because then you can adjust and make tweaks to your diet to live that more purposeful life. Absolutely. <laughs> I hope that each and every one of you have the most amazing week. We say God bless you, and we will see you next week. Bye. Hi, I'm Peter Nielsen. I am super excited to talk about the future of skincare with our new product line called Exo Skin Simple. It has everything to do with exosomes. Exosomes are excreted from cells. They carry proteins in messenger RNA to neighboring cells to influence their biological function. They help increase collagen production as well as reduce inflammation responses. They also help in the healing process while improving skin hydration. Welcome to the next generation of skincare. Join me. For more information on exoceuticals, just scan the QR code or click the link below. The future of beauty is here.